fellow crochet friends, what do you think? This is my crochet high-low cape. Now, this pattern, I went out of my way to make it as simple as possible so that even beginners would be able to do this easily. No increases, no decreases. One stitch, single crochet all the way. And I like to use the single crochet for these kind of projects because this is the kind of crochet wearable that I want the shape, the silhouette, to be the focus, not the stitch. And I wanted something sleeker, so the nice flat single crochet stitches achieve that look. Here's the back. And this is super simple, very easy to adjust for size. There's no multiple. It doesn't get any easier than that. But of course, this is all completely adjustable to whatever you prefer. And you can, of course, make the, the cape, the back, longer, shorter. So make sure you go to crazycoolcrochet.com and I will have the written pattern up there at some point. It's usually a couple days after I upload the video to YouTube. And it will also make its way the printable pattern that you can purchase at my Etsy shop, which, by the way, is called Crazy Cool Crochet US, as in the United States, dot Etsy dot com. All those links will be in the description area below. I did put most of the detail in the actual tutorial this time. Again, I'm trying to make it easy for everybody. And don't forget, if you would like to support my work, if you want me to keep bringing you these crazy cool designs, <laughs> then please make sure to subscribe, comment, thumbs up. Most of all, watch the video all the way through. That is the, the best way that you can support me. And if you want to go buy the pattern, <laughs> that would be helpful too. Okay, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and start the tutorial. For the crochet high low cape in hot pink, or I will also call it the crochet Hilo Pancho. Materials that we're using is the Yarn Be Soft Secret. This is a number four and the color is hot pink. And the skeins are six ounces each. I will give, once again, all the detail in the description area, the white space below the video. You have to manually open it up so you can read more detail, sizing information, the links to crazycoolcrochet.com where the written pattern will be found a few days after the YouTube video goes live and also the links to my Etsy shop where you will be able to purchase the printable pattern. So we will also be using a yarn needle, scissors, the crochet hook is an H or a 5 millimeter and a measuring tape. We will be working with measurements rather than row counts. It's just so much easier. This yarn does stretch a little bit after you put it on. When you are working your measurements for yourself, do allow the back panel to have a stretch of about an inch or two beyond the measurement that you get on the table. The front panel, because it's so much shorter, will not have that problem nearly as much. It stretched stretch down half inch, an inch at the most, I would say. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now we will be making the two panels, the front and the back. And for both the front and the back, we will start with a chain of 123. One, two, three. So the width of both panels will be the same. It's the length up and down that, of course, will be different. Now for this, this is optional, but it will make for a nicer finished bottom. So what I would like to do is start the single crochets. You will do a single crochet in each chain for a total of 122. 
We'll start in the second chain from the hook. You do not count the one on the hook. And there's that first one, teeny tiny, that shrink up. But we're going to turn this over a little bit until you see those little loops in the back. See, here's the front. And I did make my chains a little bit on the looser side. That's why they look like that. And when you turn it over, there's a third loop in the back. That's where we're working. And this will give you a nice flat bottom and it does not require a border. If you prefer to work into the chains because it's faster and easier, feel free to do that. And then it's up to you if you want to leave it that way when all is said and done, or if you want to go back at the end and add a little single crochet border on the bottom. Entirely optional. Okay, so we are going to work in that back loop for our single crochets. There's the front. Turn it over a little bit. There's the back. So just do that all the way across for a total of 122 single crochets. We entered that last single crochet and then we're going to chain one and turn. And now we're just going to enter a single crochet in each space across for another 122 single crochets. So we are entering in the spaces between single crochets below. And yes, you do start in the first space. You can also look at it as entering the hook under the two strand chain at the top. See the chain that forms at the top? Just enter your hook under those two strands. In case you're confused as to where the spaces are. Okay, so just do that all the way across. All right, we're at the end of that row. And especially again for crochet beginners, I'm just letting you know that you need to be very careful with the last stitch that you don't miss that last space. It looks like a little nub at the end, but look, see that two strand chain? That's where you need to go, and that'll be 122. So counting is extremely important. This is how you keep your nice straight edges and consistency in where you're entering that hook. Then we will chain one, which I just did, and turn, and then repeat. So you'll enter into that first space. There's the two strand chain. And single crochet in each space across again. Okay, so now for the sizing for the front and the back. Okay, this is my back panel, which is in progress. Now the width for both panels is the same. So for size small, it's 34 inches wide. And as you add sizes, I would add about 10 chains additional to the foundation chain. And that will give you about two inches additional width. Since we were working on the front panel, I will talk about the length of the front panel first. So for myself, I am going to make mine 12 inches long, and that will fit me from the neck down to a few inches below the bust line. And that will vary, again, considerably depending on your chest measurements. If you need to cover more area, then of course, you'll need to make yours, you know, as long as you need. So measure from a little bit high up on the neck and we will be adding a border. Do as many rows as you need. I'm not giving row counts. Just work with measurements on this one. 
Okay, that's the front panel. Now for the back panel, the same width as I've already said, now the length for a size small. You'll want to work from 27 and a half to 28 inches long. That again is for my sizing and because I'm so short, you probably might want yours longer. Again, it depends on where you want it to land also on your body. If you want it much longer, make it as long as you want. That sizing from the table to the body will change quite a bit. It will stretch about two inches. So if you've got your length, as I said, 28 inches on the table, when I put it on, it's going to be 30 inches on my body. From the neck, this is before the, the little border. Okay, so that's all the instructions that you need. This is how easy it is. All you're doing is single crochet is the exact same number. There's going to be no increasing or decreasing anywhere. Once the panels are done, we're just going to seam them at the shoulder and it will come down. We'll call it a sleeve, but of course it's not a sleeve. Okay, so the neck opening, the shoulders, so we will seam at the shoulders when we put the two panels together and then down and it should land around your elbow. So all of this is what drops. So almost like a drop sleeve. So keep working on your panels and then we will come back and do the seams. Okay, now that we are done with the front panel, we're going to do one single crochet row for a little border just on the edges. Make sure that you finish your panels on the right side and this is how you know you've got the right side this is the tail from the foundation chain will be on the left side just single crochet down the one row cut off the yarn reattach the yarn over here and then go up and then tie off the yarn at the end of that row do not do anything with the top row and it's the same process with the longer back panel okay now when we finish that last row you do your last single crochet chain one and now turn the panel sideways and we are going to enter single crochets along the edge now if you prefer if you have a nice clean edge everything is nice and even you don't need to do the single crochet border but i do believe it gives it a more polished finish so single crochet into that first row for the first space Always make sure you get at least two strands under your hook. And just go evenly across as much as possible. When you get to the end of the row, just go ahead and cut off the yarn. Leave a tail so that you can weave that in at the end and hide it. Okay, now before we continue, I want to show you how to weave in your tails in case you've not done that yet. One method, and there are different ways of doing this as with most things in crochet, you can insert the yarn in your yarn needle and then on the wrong side of the work, of course, you want to run the needle in and out of several strands, only one strand and only on the back side. Don't go into the front side. And it can just be random. Okay, if you've got a long enough tail, you might want to do a couple more strands and then you come back around the other way. And right next to it, go under different strands. And then go back one more time the opposite direction ok 
Okay, now most people just cut it off right there and call it a day. I prefer to have this a little more secure. I, I use knots. So I use a smaller hook than I've been working with. And I bring it through again just one strand. And then I do a chain. I do two or three chains. And then I squeeze it down good and tight. And now you can cut it off right close to the knot. And that's going nowhere. We've got the front panel on top of the back panel. Right sides are touching each other. Wrong sides are out so that we can seam the shoulders. And there's the neck. So now for the size small, the width was 34 inches. So in order to, in order to center center the neck. Say I measured 12 and a half inches on both sides and that will be the same. That leaves me with a nine inch neck opening. Now if you're experienced feel free to seam the shoulders however you prefer. I'm going to do the hook and a slip stitch. And we start at the corners. Insert the hook under two stitches of each panel. And bring the yarn through. Now I like to do a chain to lock it in. And then we will do slip stitches all along the top until you get to your stitch marker. Now if you prefer to do the seaming with your yarn needle and yarn, I would do a whip stitch. Whoops. So you just go around and around and around the top. So when you slip stitch, you just bring the yarn through and straight through that loop on the hook. That's a slip stitch. Don't make it too tight. That might cause the seam to buckle a little bit. By the same token, don't make it too loose. because That might cause the seam to open up a little bit. So just continue doing this until you get to the stitch marker. And when you come to your stitch marker, you're going to tie this off. Now this is going to be really important that you have a very strong secure tie off because this is all done in one continuous strand basically with the slip stitch. So if this comes undone, the entire thing just unravels. Okay, so let's do my three chain knot. Leave a good sized tail this time. Cut it off. Pull the yarn through, squeeze it down. Now when you go to do the opposite side, we're going to end it completely different. So don't do this on both sides. Okay, now I would take the hook, going under one strand, it's easier with a smaller hook, and bring the yarn through. Okay, so go down a couple of inches and now do that three chain knot again. And that should be pretty darn secure and cut off the yarn. Okay, now for the opposite side, what we're going to do differently okay, is turn the panel so that you're starting on the edge and working into the neck just like we did before. Do the same method, but when you get to your stitch marker and you do your last slip stitch, just stop right there. Do not cut off the yarn. Okay, now when you are done with your last slip stitch on the shoulder seam, 
Do not cut off the yarn. Now we're going to do five rows of single crochet around the neck and that will give us a really beautiful little almost like a mock turtleneck but it gives a gorgeous finish to the piece. You can optionally leave it as is or just do one row of single crochet to finish it off. If you are really really averse to a little bit of a turtleneck. Okay, so when you're done with that last slip stitch do a chain one and that just locks in that last stitch and then into the next space along the neckline. Just start doing single crochets in each space around. When you come to the shoulder seam, go ahead and do a single crochet into the seam. And then continue into the single crochets along the neck. When you come back around to where you started, slip stitch into the first single crochet of that border. Chain one and turn. And now continue with your single crochets into each single crochet space. So the reason we did that little turn is so that we are working it the same way as we did the body. So that you do one row, turn, do the next row, turn. Because we want the stitches to look exactly the same. So now continue exactly the same. So when you come around and you're back to where you started, slip stitch into the first single crochet of that row, the second row, chain one, turn again and then continue around and you want to do that for five total rows. If you have a longer neck and you want it up higher, that little the border, then feel free to keep going around until it's the height that you like and then you can tie off the yarn. Now I'm on row five of the neckline, the neck border, and I just wanted to show you what I have done on row four and row five to tighten up the top of the neck just the tiniest bit. I'm skipping a space where the shoulder seam would be. So rather than go into that space right there, I'm just going to skip it and go into the next one. And I did that on both sides. Now when you finish the last row, slip stitch into the beginning of that row and tie it off. Leave a good size tail so you can weave that in. Okay, now we are still working on the wrong side. We have completed the neckline, the shoulder seaming. Now we are going to do a three inch seam right over here so that your arm will slip through that opening. That'll be like an armhole opening. And you can use a stitch marker so you know when to stop. Do that on both sides. And this time we will use a yarn needle and the whip stitch. Insert the hook into the cornermost stitch and then insert it into that back panel. I like to tie right here to secure it. And then go around the back, two stitches on each side. Now you're coming back around the back again. Now I like to take the needle and come back through, several stitches. This is my version of weaving in 
that tail. And I will do my knot. Because none of this is going to show. So just do the same on the other side. All right, one little tip. If when you are done, okay, this is right side out now. This is the armhole. And up here at the shoulder, so you can see here that this is kind of wonky looking. If you still have a tail, I'm gonna turn this around. Okay, you might see the wonkiness better now. So you can see how it's not nice and clean. Okay, so all I do is take the hook, insert it near the seam, grab the tail, pull it through, and then tighten it. Bring the hook through again. Bring the yarn through a stitch. So the goal is to get this as straight as possible. Okay, so now you can see how this is straightened out considerably. Now you weave in that tail. So before you weave in your tails, Check for little areas like that, that might need to be cleaned up a little bit. There you go. And here is our completed crochet high-low cape or crochet high-low poncho. Of course, once you put it on, it looks beautiful. On the table, yeah, <laughs> but that's always the case, isn't it? I truly hope that you enjoyed this project. So who's bringing the cool to crochet? Crazy cool crochet. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe and all those things that will really help me out. Thank you so much. We will see you in the next project.